Hi right, guys, uh, I'm Pori Master here today. So they call him Pori Master right here. I got a Pori. Call him right here in Long Island Sound. Uh, that's where we are right now, Long Island. Travel all over though, believe it or not, looking for the best boss to get some Porgies. As you can see, it's decent sized, not bad. Um, you can tell it's a Porgy by, see, <laughs> flops on the fish, right? Oh, yeah. You can tell by uh, how they flop, believe check, it or not. Check this out right here. Right here, uh, this is Alex Johnson. He's one of my crew. Um, he's kind of under, he's under me right now. See you right there. You can tell that's a pork. You see the way he's flopping back and forth. Most fish flop, but, 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 they're more of a da, da, da. <laughs> and you can see his coloring. Uh, he's got gray and a little bit of black, a little bit of blue up by the dorsal fin. Um, and again, so in the sound, what we do to catch porgies, double hooked rig, one higher than the other. So it keeps them a little bit different. And uh, I'm using a three ounce weight. There's not much current, so it gets it right down there. I've got clam on these hooks. That's what they really like. Little hooks, so it gets just right in the lip. You don't want them to swallow. I mean, it happens sometimes. So what I'm going to do, put in the water, release the drag, goes down. There See, you go. That was just a flying porgy. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. It wasn't really a flying porgy. He just threw his cash back. What you got to do is you got to wait. Uh, sometimes a jig. Oh, oh, I had a big bite there. You can tell. You, you know it's a bite when you're uh, holding the rod, right? It's on the bottom, and you hear a dun and uh, <laughs> you feel it too, but what you want to make sure is when you're on the bottom that you don't get snagged. Depends on where you are, but some places are rockier than others, some more seaweed, so you can get tend to get caught up. So in some places you actually don't want to leave it on the ground, but here it's not too bad. A little bit of seaweed here and there, some rocks, but we can just leave it on the bottom. So I just let it wait, wait till I get a hook, hook the fish. That's what you got to do. Stand here. Sometimes I I think standing up higher sometimes does it. I don't know fish. Sometimes fish like people that stand high. Um, you can see back there, Alec just put his hand in the water. You do that to, believe it or not, give your scent to the porgies. They really, they believe it or not, have a really strong scent. They're actually almost blind. It's just they, there we go. Nope, he's, he's off. Okay. It's not bad. It's okay. But yeah, they've got a really great sense of smell. Uh, that's why clam is really great because it's really strong smelling and they, although they're blind or it's dark under there, they can smell it right out go right to it, bite it, and then you got porgy. You're gonna bring them up. You, um, some people like to cook them whole. I like to fillet. I don't like dealing with the bones when I'm eating it. But it's your choice. Some people say the bones give it more flavor. Um, we're actually also, believe it or not, going for blackfish out here. Haven't been very successful. Just a nice slow drift across the sound. So as you can see over there, we got Connecticut. Can't really see it. It's kind of faint. And there, Alec, he's just chilling, you know, taking his time. Okay, I got a porgy on the line. I'm gonna reel him up, try not to lose him. As you can see, he's really, look at the flex of the rod. He can, they give up a little fight. There, he got a porgy. So now we got to do, once you get the porgy on here, you're going to bring him up, make sure he's in the boat so you don't lose him. He's not really keeping size. They actually, oh. believe it or not, have to be 11 inches to make him. Wait, hold on one second. I want to grab. Okay, here's another one. That's fine. Show it over here. We just saw one got brought up. This looks like a big one. Okay, nice uh, little, little baby. What you're going to do, you're going to grab him from the underside. Careful, these fins right here are very sharp. Ow, see that? Right there, she's very sharp. Um, there's his eye. That's an eye. They, that's what they see out of. Um, you grab the bottom. Here's his gills. You don't want to, they believe it or not, they actually, here, I'll show you. They have little teeth. Ah. <laughs> take that out. Please take that out. Please take that out. <laughs> you know, they've got little teeth. Uh, zoom in here. Zoom in here. They've got some nice little teeth right there. That's what they with. And then what you want to do, you want to be nice to the fish. So I usually just toss him back in. Mm, it's fine. He did. And then, all bloody. Again, I put oh. my hand back. <laughs> there you go. Put my hand back in to check, check it out. Get all the. Should we sacrifice him? No, just no. He's swimming. He's trying to swim in the air. Yeah, actually. See, they try and swim in the air. Believe it or not, some can fly. Just not like a lot. Just a kind of a glide, more of it. Yeah, see, and then you like... just throw them back in and watch them swim away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they start swimming in a sec. Sometimes they, uh, believe it or not, they tend to take a nice little nap. Sometimes they nap for hours above the surface. You know. Whoa. <laughs> okay, so now. As you can see. He's caught under the boat right there. Okay, Brian. He's about to come out. Oh, there he is. As you can see over here. Oh, wait, wait. He's he's swimming down. Okay, he's alive, Brian. All right, there he's alive. Okay, as you can see, I've still got my bait. You sometimes want to check it to make sure it's not going to come off the hook in a sec. So you got to bring it up, you know, look at it, look at it. See, this is almost coming off, so I'm going to take my hook, and I'm going to take the sharp part of the hook, definitely. Always the sharp part, not the part that's tied up here. you got to make sure it's the sharp part, otherwise you know, can't even get your bait on there, really. So I'm going to put it back through again, just so it's got a little more grip. Make sure a little bit of the hook is showing. See that? You can see there's some nice, uh, some nice clam on the hook. It's not bad. So put it down again. Put my drag button. Let it go down. And you know it hits the bottom 
when see how it's spools and reeling? When it stops. When it stops and going, you know you hit bottom. So then you gotta again wait, maybe give it a few jigs. Al glue, put your hand in the water for a sec just to give him some scent. Yes, he, he's doing that for me. Look at his hand. Oh, we got fish jumping over. Oh, it's her. It's her. Oh, it's <laughs> Okay, um. So yeah, again, you just wait. Alright, Pory Master again. Um, another just a little tip for when you're gonna go pory fishing is what happens when you are using clams, you're gonna pick up a bunch of different little bottom fish. Right now, as you see, I got a little sea bass here. What we want to really be careful is, again, their dorsal fin. See that? That's a spike. All spike right there. And we gotta make sure, see, they open their mouth very wide, and what they do is they swallow the bait hole. See, as you can see, you're, uh, you can get a whole finger in there. It just keeps expanding. Really does. Um, also, what makes them, believe it or not, even, although they're so small, is see how, I mean, give them a fight, even though they're so small? See how far their tan, their fail tans, their tail fans, see that? <laughs> right there, it gives them a lot of pushing weight, so they can really propel against the water. Oh, wait, wait, tape this, I have a fish on the line. Okay, we got a fish on the line, Brian. I think... Here, let me pull them in. Just in I Here. think... Hold on. No, let me reel. My hands are Alright. I think okay, this uh, may be another nice sea bass right here. here. Yeah, there is. Oh, okay. never, never mind, sometimes you get these little fake. Oh, thought I might have had a bite on my other reel right here. Um, Zach, do you have it on yours? No, I don't. Okay, so back to uh, the sea bass right here. As you can see, he's probably about, I don't know, five to six feet. <laughs> see? I'm really. I'm just kidding. I'm not really five to six feet. I'm just joking with you. He's probably about. 6 to 12 feet now. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Um, I guess he's, he's probably about 5 inches. So here, but oh, believe it or not, because there are bass, if you can fillet them right, you get actually a lot of meat about this entire side you can eat. Um, best way to do that is probably fry it up. What I do is put them in, so once you get them filleted right, you're going to dip the little pieces of fillet in flour, dip them in egg, make sure it's completely covered. Then you're going to uh, dip them in Italian breadcrumbs, I like to do. And then you're going to heat up a pan with either canola oil or, or olive oil. I tend to use olive oil. I think it's a little more natural, a little better for your heart. It also just gives it that much extra flavor. Then once you get your oil nice and hot in the pan, you're going to just drop the filet right in, like that in the pan. Although it's going to be filet, so it's not going to look like this. Um, what I like to do, actually, believe it or not, what has a lot of flavor on this fish, his eyes. A bass's eye is filled with different fats and proteins, which give it a lot of extra flavor. So I like to dig them out. Do the same, fry them this exact same way. They got a little bit of crunch, but it's really nice. And see right there, you can get, see in the mouth, you see the tongue. That actually also has a lot of flavor, so you really just don't want to waste anything on this fish. And about six of these will give you a nice meal. Okay, that's all for the porgy master right now. I'm going to try and get some more porgies on the line. If I do, I'll... Oh yeah, and also, as you noticed, porgy typical... Uh, Porgy attire. You never really want to wear a shirt because I was just saying they got the great sense of smell. So do these little bass, their little nose holes right here. And what it is is not wearing the shirt gives off that much extra scent to the water. And as you can see, the porgies just tend to float around the boat. They know uh, where they're going to be because they can really smell you. So never have their shirt on. Actually, the best way to catch porgies is naked, but I figured I'm on television right now, so I'm not going to be naked for you guys. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, gonna keep trying to get me some porgies. See you later. I'm Porgy Master. Hey, Porgy Master here. Uh, as you see, we got one of the porgies that we caught right out on the sound, right in front of the house. See, it's right where it is, right in our own backyard. Pretty fortunate. Okay, so we're gonna be filleting right now. Show you how to do it. So you gotta start. I just like grabbing <laughs> one in the face to start. I think that's nice here. And then I'm actually gonna believe it or not, start the filleting off by handing the knife to my crew, Alec Johnson. He's gonna start by getting off the dorsal fin right here. Point to it, please. And then also the bottom fin, the tail, and taking off the head. That poor you was filleted. Right here. You want to clean it off a little? Cool. <laughs> <laughs>